You want to see the October surprise that just might kill Donald Trump's chances of becoming president? This one stupid racist joke. Watch. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Do you want to know the people that are mostly offended by this comment? Non-Puerto Ricans, people who don't live there, and people who have never been there before in their lives. Liberals. Liberals are so desperate right now that they want this to be the next major headline when one, Trump didn't say it, two, the man was a comedian, but three, you know why? Because it brings fucking attention to the last three and a half, almost four years that Kamala Harris was in office and did nothing to help the people of Puerto Rico. What this did is it shined light on the issues in Puerto Rico, okay? There is so much pollution there washed up on these beaches and the people of Puerto Rico are miserable and they can't get any help from this administration. I think the reality is there's several landfills in Puerto Rico that are taking over the water system, being poured into the oceans and really polluting and damaging the island. That could have been what he was referencing to, but it was just poor time and just poor choice of words um, that I think that folks that are on the fence really led them away from Trump at this time. So I think that's why strategically he needs to address it. Did it at all make you question your support for him? No. It, I do believe it could hurt, but I also learned that the reason the reference was made is because there's 29 dump sites, garbage dump sites in Puerto Rico, and the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration, are not allowing them to burn it. Um, so they're the ones turning Puerto Rico into a garbage dump. That's what I heard. I'm not sure how it, true it is. Puerto Rico's only 70 miles by 35 miles, 29 garbage dumps that they can't do anything with it. I mean, you figure it out. Does the comment and the fact that it took place at one of his largest events of the year make you question your support for him at all? No, not at all. Your comments like that, does that change your perspective about who you might vote for? No. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about another liberal media hoax that is a failed attempt of the mainstream liberal media to manufacture a reality that just simply does not exist, okay? We're talking about the backlash and the fallout from the Puerto Rico joke that was told at the Trump Madison Square Garden rally by a comedian, okay? Now, in the real world, uh, most people understand that this is just a joke, but the media, because they think that people are dumb, okay, they try to manufacture fake outrage and basically speak on the, on behalf of the Puerto Rican people in regards to how they're supposed to feel about a joke, right? They're supposed to be outraged and upset at President Trump for a joke that he did not tell, right? And they focus heavily on this idea that somehow this joke is going to sway the outcome of the election, mainly because there's a large enough population of Puerto Ricans in swing states like, for example, Pennsylvania. All right, why are Republicans so nervous about those comments right there? Well, it has to do, as I said, with one of the most important voting blocks and one of the most important places, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, you remember the Commonwealth? Joe Biden won it by just 81,000 votes in 2020. Donald Trump won it by 44,000 votes in 2016. So you get the idea. It's really close in Pennsylvania. Okay, there are around 600,000 by some counts, 600,000 Latino voters, I'll put an L right there, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, around by some counts, 300,000 Puerto Rican voters in the state of Pennsylvania, the third highest Puerto Rican population in the entire country. Maybe the most telling is Lehigh County. That's where Allentown is. People know the Billy Joel song from Allentown, but Lehigh County's had huge demographic shifts over the years, has nearly a 50% Hispanic population. And you can see Joe Biden won 53% of the vote there, 98,000 votes. He was able to get 17,000 votes more than Hillary Clinton did. This is often seen Lehigh County as one of the most important swing counties in the entire country. Huge Puerto Rican population, Kate. You can understand, you can understand why Republicans are nervous about this campaign. Kamala Harris was in Pennsylvania talking to Puerto Rican voters while they were being made, Kate. 
they will win this election. You know, black women I always think, save us. This time, all women will I save us. I think all women will save us. I agree with that. I, I, I'll just say, you know, I think it's really easy for those that aren't otherized in this country to not be offended and to mm -hmm. tell us, those that are otherized and marginalized, not to be offended. Well, I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended about what was said yes. during the rally, not only about my community, but about all communities. Yeah. And I'll say, I think we need to call that rally what it was. It was a white nationalist rally with a white nationalist platform. Be enough for you. And on November 5th, I want you to vote for your heritage and your traditions and your identity. I want you to vote with dignity and self-respect. Latinos, comunidad, si ustedes tienen respeto por sí mismos, si tienen dignidad, defiendan esa dignidad y usen sus votos el 5 de noviembre para sacar a Donald Trump. <laughs> Anna Navarro basically, basically telling Puerto Ricans, which she's not one, by the way, but she's telling Puerto Ricans, hey, if you don't vote against Trump, if you vote for Kamala Harris, then you ain't really Puerto Rican, okay? You don't have pride in your people. Okay, these people do not understand that they're more insulting than the actual joke that they pretend to be offended by. Okay, because the reality is this. Okay, um, I do not think that many people were offended, uh, and we have some evidence and proof that all of this outrage from the media is just that <laughs> outrage from the media, not real people. Because it just so happens that Trump today. Uh, it's currently having a rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown, Pennsylvania is one of these towns that is supposed to have a large Puerto Rican slash Latino population. Okay. And you would think that there would be some fireworks, uh, considering how there's so much backlash. There's so much, uh, fallout from these comments, right? The Puerto Rican community is so upset by this, right? They're so upset. They're all turning against Trump and they're going to vote for Kamala Harris because of these comments, right? And again, this is what the media, uh, tried to play up. Okay. As Trump, uh, visited Allentown today. This is what they try to play up. Take a look. And turning now to the Trump campaign at this hour, there are protests outside Donald Trump's rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is a majority Latino city. The former president did not apologize for the racist and vile comments at his New York City rally and instead said it was an honor to be part of the event. We get more on the intensifying fallout from CBS's Caitlin Huey Burns. It was like a love fest an absolute love fest, and it was my honor to be involved. Starting the day in Florida, former President Donald Trump basked in the glow of Sunday's packed Madison Square Garden rally while making no mention of the racist remarks from an opening act. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. The Trump campaign said the comments from okay. comedian Tony right. Hinchcliffe don't reflect Trump's views, but the Republican nominee has yet to condemn them. Bad Bunny. Puerto Rican star Bad Bunny posted this video to his over 45 million Instagram followers today, highlighting other stars of the island. The former president is campaigning in Pennsylvania today, and at a roundtable outside Philadelphia, a Puerto Rican participant told Trump she was still behind him. But I think no president's done more for Puerto Rico than I have, so thank you. That's really nice of you to say. Tonight, Trump is holding a rally in Allentown, a majority Latino city where Puerto Ricans make up nearly a third of the population. The event was scheduled well before Hinchcliffe's performance, but much like with the crowd in Madison Square Garden, his joke didn't land in Allentown either. I was all Trump until until then. I was pretty th thrown off by the whole Puerto Rican garbage thing. Yeah, so this is the propaganda being pushed in the media, okay? The protests are intensifying, okay? The backlash is growing, okay, against Trump. This is what they're saying on the national news media, okay? They interview one person and they try to make it seem like the fallout is so intense, okay? Now, when you actually look at the footage on the ground, right, at this rally, in which, again, you're talking about a city that has a large Latino population, particularly a large Puerto Rican population. And this is why I said, well, I'm going to pay attention to what happens. I am going to know if this fallout is real, if the backlash is actually real, based off what happens in the real world, okay? If people are that upset by those comments, then there should, at the very least, be a sizable counter protest to the trump rally from the puerto rican community okay that there should be a sizable protest um but it turns out that 
once again, this is just fake media outrage because the so-called intensifying protest and backlash only resulted in two people, two people showing up to the anti-Trump Puerto Rican protest in Allentown, a town that has a very, very, very significant Puerto Rican population. Take a look. Voters like Carlos Figueroa and his sister Yvette tell our Terry Moran Trump's rally struck a nerve. So when you heard that joke, there's a floating island of garbage in Puerto Rico. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. How do you feel? That's my sister. This is not a joke. We're not trash. Yeah, we're not trash. We're citizens as everybody up in here. Exactly. So we we don't deserve to be called trash. Yeah, so that was it, right? I mean, that is the result of mass media outrage, okay? For 48 hours, they've been outraged about this story more than they outraged about the former president uh, almost being assassinated, right? They have been going on and on and on and on and on about how the Puerto Rican community, the Latino community, they're so upset about this and yada, yada, yada. Now, again, you would think in a town, where there's a large Puerto Rican population, that there will be more than just two people, two people protesting the rally, but only two people showed up, right? Only two people. And the media said that the protest was intensifying. This is what they said. It really shows you how much of a joke the media is, okay? They're trying to manufacture outrage that just doesn't exist. That's what's happening. Now, when Trump showed up, uh, there wasn't a lot of outrage. There was actually a whole lot of love and also a key endorsement for President Trump because the shadow senator of Puerto Rico ended up endorsing him at this rally in which a lot of Puerto Ricans attended the rally and went to the rally. Take a look. Today, Trump at a roundtable in Drexel Hill getting a show of support from Maribel Valdez, who says she moved from Puerto Rico in 1981. And I want you to know that Puerto Rico stands behind you and Puerto Rico loves you. I, I know it very well. I think no president's done more for Puerto Rico than I have. My name is Zoraida Buxo, and I am the Republican United States shadow senator from a beautiful island where I was born and raised. Indeed, a community very well anchored with steadfast conservative values of family, faith, economic freedom, and deep, deep love of country. <laughs> Blessed by God, that is home, that is Puerto Rico. So we won't get rattled, we won't yield to ignorance, foolishness, or irrational thoughtlessness. We will remain focused on what is really important. We all share a desire for change for the good. The course that our nation has been wrongfully placed by the Biden-Harris administration must be reversed. We have some unfinished business to do with respect to Puerto Rico. And if there is a leader get, that can get us to a final resolution, that is you. That is you. So the people of Puerto Rico trust you and we have high hopes. As many Americans, we need this man back in the White House. We need this man to be our commander in chief. He will make us feel safe and he will protect us. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Highly respected person. And I'm so proud that we're getting support from Latinos like never before. We're setting every record. Hispanics, Latinos, nobody loves our Latino community and our Puerto Rican community more than I do. Nobody. You know, it's interesting because I've done more for Puerto Rico than any president by far. Nobody close. I provided historic funding and the hospital ship when we had, they were hit with a couple of really bad ones right in the road. We got the ship over there with thousands of rooms, actually. It was amazing. A floating hospital, the biggest in the world. I will deliver the best future for Puerto Ricans and for Hispanic Americans. Kamala will deliver you poverty and crime. That's all they're going to do. And by the way, she has slandered the people of the Catholic Church. I don't know what it is with Catholics, but they are after Catholics. But we're going to protect the Catholics, too. We're going to protect. I don't know what you, what you did, Catholics. But you're being persecuted by Kamala and her group. I will keep your family safe. I will defend religion. I will bring jobs, wealth, and factories back. And Puerto Rico in itself will be very thankful. The whole Hispanic Latino community will be very, very thankful. And I appreciate the, uh, you know, we have numbers that nobody's ever had before. Nobody's ever had these numbers. No Republicans even come close. You take a look at some of our Republicans, they were in a tiny fraction. I may get I may get 50% of the vote. Nobody's even heard of that before. And more, and more, and more, and more. We're just, we're doing the right thing. Incredible people, energetic, smart, great entrepreneurial people. We appreciate, and we have a lot of them here tonight. Thank you very much. Latinos, Hispanics, Puerto Rico. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. What else needs to be said, right? What else needs to be said? I think Trump support is strong. I think that this whole Puerto Rico joke thing is nonsense, right? I don't think that that many people are offended by it. And the people who are offended by it to the point where they're going to vote for Kamala Harris already were going to vote for her, right? Turns out the only Puerto Ricans that are upset are the ones that already were going to vote for Kamala Harris, okay? That seems to be... Uh, the people that are the most upset about this and they're trying to pretend as if that's a reflection of the whole Puerto Rican community. In fact, I think that, you know, personally, if I was Puerto Rican, I would be more offended by the fact that these people all think that Puerto Ricans uh, are supposed to be offended by this joke to the point where they vote for more disaster and chaos for four years, right? They, they really think that some Puerto Ricans are so emotional that they're going to change their vote based off of a joke, right? This is what they think, right? And you know, what's so funny to me is that they kept asking Trump to apologize, right? People were like, oh, Trump needs to come out and apologize. And I'm like, nah, Trump is not going to apologize. And that's the one thing I like about Trump because he understands something that a lot of people on the right don't understand. When you apologize, that is an admission of guilt, right? Apologies are an admission of guilt in the left. They don't respect apologies, right? They only demand apologies as a way to make you grovel, to make you get on your feet and to acknowledge that you were wrong. And then once you do that, they will basically kick you in the face and tell you, hey, we don't accept your apology, right? You're still a racist. You're still a bigot. That's what happened to Ron Gerdusky on CNN, okay? This man apologized on set and then they end up banning him, okay? And they're going to smear him as a racist and he will never be allowed on the liberal media platforms ever again, okay? It doesn't matter if you apologize. So there's no need to apologize over a joke at all. OK, um, because ultimately at the, end of the day, it was a joke and it's nothing to apologize for. The people that understood the joke, they understood the joke. The people that didn't, they, they didn't understand it. And that's it. <laughs> at the, end of the day, It's not that big of a deal. And clearly this is a creation of the media. They're trying to execute yet again another self-fulfilling prophecy where they claim that something is happening or something's going to happen. Uh, in order to make it happen, not because it's actually happening, but because they want it to happen. <laughs> so they continue to kick, scream and cry and to wish that it happens, even though it's not happening, right? All of the outrage is simply 
just that outrage in the media and real people in real life are really not outraged by this evidenced by the fact that nobody showed up to the so-called counter protest at all again you would think a ton of people would show up if the puerto rican community was so upset by this joke uh if you listen to the mainstream liberal media but you know again it's just that is the creation of the media nothing else let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace